Hi, welcome to my show. Today, my guest is Joan Almochi. Hi, she is vice president of Metro Detroit Book and Author Society. And the way I came across um, this particular group is by being invited um, by Robin Gaines, who is also a member of Detroit Working Writers, and I'm vice president of Detroit Working Writers. And she wanted me um, to kind of be a shadow <laughs> on the board member because she, as a board member because she is has other things and sometimes she's out of town. Um, and I was just very happy to be a part of this because uh, of the kind of work that you do and the luncheons that we're going to be talking about today, <laughs> the two luncheons that you have every year. Plus, I was very fascinated. This I, I wasn't uh, so much aware about this until later, uh, the history of Metro Detroit Book and Author Society. So um, welcome, Joan. Thank you. So glad that you're able to make it today. And um, I would love, oh, and you're, you also are, uh, you are a former public library director. Yes. And you work in the d fiction department in Southfield Library. Correct. Yes. So you're all about books. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about Metro Detroit Book and Author Society for those that are, have not even heard of it, maybe. We call ourselves the best kept secret <laughs> in Metro Detroit. <laughs> The Metro Detroit Book and Author Society was established in 1972 for the explicit purpose of presenting a luncheon featuring major national authors. And we've had luncheons twice a year in May and October ever since. We get up to 1,300 people at our luncheon. We consider ourselves the biggest one-day author event in the country. We have major authors, absolutely some of the biggest authors in the country at these two luncheons. Mm -hmm. And we have between three and five authors and lunch. Mm -hmm. The luncheon's currently held at Burton Manor in Livonia. The upcoming luncheon is October 15th at Burton Manor in Livonia. Cool. Well, um, can you, I know that in some of the meetings, I've heard about some of the interesting authors that you have. Mm -hmm. on. <laughs> uh, do you have any stories to share? And then we can go into the authors that are going to be coming this year. We've had the biggest authors and we've had some very funny stories, and I don't want to name names, but we've had authors <laughs> sing. We've had author. We've had authors come with bodyguards. Oh, we've had just. We've had authors come in limos with entourages. Wow. We've had authors come in jeans carrying a suit on a hanger. <laughs> we've had all kinds of kinds of interesting stories. Um, I wrote down some of the authors we've had. Mm -hmm. This is our. Our 93rd luncheon, believe it or not, without ever missing one. So I wrote down some of the authors we've had over the years just and to give y you an idea yes, uh, who, of, who, of who we've had. I'll run down this list really fast. Sure, um, uh, Debbie McComber, Dan Rather, we've had a lot of celebrity authors. Sebastian Younger, Michael Connolly, Lee Iacocca. Mary Higgins Clark numerous times. She loved oh, us. Wow. She she used to come in a private jet. Hmm. Cokie Roberts, Harlan Coben, James Patterson, Joyce Carol Oates, Tennessee Williams, Stephen King, Toni Morrison, and Deepak Chopra. And those are just the ones that I picked out to write down. Okay. We, we've had really tremendous so authors. why didn't I know about you guys before? Because we're the best <laughs> hidden secret in Metro Detroit. <laughs> I'm going to have to find out who kept you guys a secret all this time. Um, well, the luncheons that I have gone to so far, I haven't gone back that far, but um, I really enjoyed them. It's, they're very informative. The authors are really, you know, each one has their own unique um, yes. personality. They're all, you. how do you choose that, by the way? Because they they all have interesting books, basically. But how do you choose your authors? Well, in the early days, we were sponsored by the Detroit News. And Ruth Coughlin, who was the book editor, a very well-known book editor, would get the authors for us. And then uh, when the Detroit News pulled out a lot of their community activities when the paper was sold, we hired a consultant. And we have a consultant now who works with publicists and publishers and gets the authors for us. 
Interesting. And how long have you been with this, uh, uh, with the Metro Detroit Book and Author Society? To my great shock, when I look back, <laughs> I've been involved with the Book and Author Society in every role from president on down for almost 20 years. Yes. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yes, yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I so really you're the been... perfect person to interview. You know so much probably. <laughs> um, and I, uh, we also have a, a really nice list for this year. We do. For the fall. Um, what was the date again? Um, uh, the 15th of October. The 15th of October. I'm going to bring in some of the guests. I have um, Lisa Unger. Um, this is her book, but let me see her picture. There she is. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about her? Or? Yes, Lisa Unger is one of the premier thriller authors, mm -hmm. uh, girl on the train kind of genre. Mm -hmm. uh, she's written many books, translated into a zillion languages. <laughs> uh -huh. um, her new book's called Under My Skin. It is a thriller mm -hmm. with a female protagonist, and um, she's our headliner this year. Okay, cool. And then you have... Um, Mark, uh, Mark Leibovich. Yeah, you did a better job. <laughs> he yeah, is uh, the speaking. New York Times, uh, New York Times Magazine's chief national correspondent, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I saw him the other week on Meet the Press. So he's also a political f um, analyst, mm -hmm. but his new book is called Big Game: The NFL in Dangerous Times, and. He, his book is about the state of professional football today, so he should be really interesting. Yeah, with all this stuff, there's a lot of drama going on with a the football. A lot of drama. Yeah. Is that what he addresses? Do you know? That yeah, he well, they, his, his, that is his new book, and his, so that's what he'll that, be that is speaking the about. Okay, great. Um, and then we have Ann Clark. Uh, I think this is... Ann Clark, and her book is um, The Poison City. Yes, Anna Clark is a Michigan oh, author. Anna Clark, Anna I'm Clark. sorry, yes. And she's a Michigan author, and this is the first really complete um, telling of the Flint water crisis story. So she should also be very interesting. Um, this year we have four nonfiction authors, which is a little unusual. Usually we have more of a balance or more fiction authors. So this should be super interesting having all the nonfiction mm -hmm. authors this time. Um, and then there's, um, I was mixing her up because there's Anna Clark and there's Ann Ford. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there's, yeah. And uh, tell us about her. Ann mm -hmm. Ford is, of course, uh, uh, from the Ford family. Mm -hmm. She is an expert on children with learning disabilities, um, ADHD, ADD. She's written several books on the subject, and she speaks nationally on the subject. And her new book is called The Stigmatized Child, and it is about children with learning disabilities. Uh, and then we have, I guess that's what you were saying. Uh, you're right. There is quite a few nonfiction yes. here, yes, uh, including Rana Audish, Rana Audish. Yeah. Um, that's her right here, Dr. Rana Audish. Um, and her book is called In Shock. Yes, she was a medical student at Wayne State when she had a medical crisis of her own and ended up as a patient, a critical care patient in the hospital. And it was apparently quite an eye-opening experience going from, I think she was a resident at the time, and going from doctor to patient and being at the mercy of the health system, she saw it from the other side. And it, it, she wrote this book about um, this experience. It's called In Shock, My Journey from Death to Recovery and the Redemptive Power of Hope. And this is quite a, a big bestseller. It's kind of to bring awareness to what's going on. Awareness. She's the director of patient care for the Henry Ford Medical System. Okay. So it's, um, we'll see, it, sh it should be very, very, that should be fascinating. Yeah, they all actually sound very fascinating. Um, and uh, these, uh, how many hours is it, the luncheon? Um, I forgot that. We, we start around noon 
we have a book sale room. We do mm-hmm. sell the books, and the authors sign their books. So you mm-hmm. do get to, get to get a picture and mm-hmm. uh, um, a moment with, with the authors at the end of the luncheon. Mm-hmm. So we start with the book sale room. We have coffee, and um, and then uh, we have a bar also. If somebody would like a afternoon cocktail. Mm-hmm. And uh, around 1 o'clock, we start serving lunch. Uh, or around 12 o'clock, we, we open the the um, lunch room. Mm-hmm. So people start arriving around 10, and around noon, we open the um, uh, lunch room. And then we start the actual presentation around 1. So it lasts about 1 to 3. Yeah, because yeah. at that point, um, I, so the book signing is before, I think? The book signing is after. You can it's purchase books before and after, and then the actual book signing is after the authors And then the speak. presentations are in between then. Are in between, in between right. Yeah. So for about one, to th- 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock are the actual presentations. Yeah, and I think um, what I also noticed is your guests are so... Um, involved and engaged in, in this. Um, it seems like you guys have really loyal audiences. <laughs> we do. We have people that have been coming to all 93 <laughs> luncheons, just about. Wow. But of course, we hope, to, we hope to get some, some newer, newer um, people discovering our group and coming to our luncheons. Yeah, because I was going to say, so from what I understand and just being in the meetings, and this is just very inspiring as well, is that so you... Um, uh, this uh, society really uh, encourages and supports different literary programs. Um, so it's not just about the luncheon, but it's really to keep literacy alive and just, you know, you're giving it a beautiful status that it needs <laughs> and to, con- to to promote it. Yes. Um, and I believe in the last luncheon, um, they said something where it's really not true that this, that that reading is dying off like people are still reading they still are intrigued and you can tell by the number of attendees that this is the case um so how does this uh the metro detroit book and author society how do they support literacy or other groups um i know you have several ways but if you could just kind of talk about it a little bit we give grants to libraries and literacy groups. Mm -hmm. We have four grants that we give on a regular basis to at our spring luncheon and two at our fall luncheon. We have the Dick Johnston Award, which is for public or academic libraries for collection development in any area Mm -hmm. uh, that a library would like to submit a grant. We have the James C. Dance Award for the Performing Arts, and that is to support a performing arts collection in a public or an academic library. We have the Elaine Irvin Friends of the Library Award, and that is for Friends of the Library groups for a special project. And we have the Mary J. Ritter Literacy Award, and that is for a literacy group or a library that has a literacy program for a special project. And if you look on our website, Mm -hmm. all of the past winners are listed, and you'll probably see your local library in our pretty long list of um, award winners, many, many public and academic libraries that we've given grants to. Wow, that's wonderful. Um, yeah, like sometimes people are not even aware that's you know you guys are the best kept secret, but you also really are involved in so many different ways. Yes. And not just yeah. Um, as a librarian, how, how long were you a librarian for? I've been a librarian for my entire career, which is mm, years. <laughs> <laughs> a long oh, time. That's it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would you say? Ha- what has been your observation of the changes that has taken place and the kind of books that are coming out and the readership, just overall your impression about uh, our culture and how things are changing and how it's also associated with the luncheon, how that whole entire observation. What would you say that had the biggest differences and how have we evolved or devolved <laughs> over the years, uh, whichever word is accurate? <laughs> um, I would say readers are still readers. Mm-hmm. And the prediction that the print book is dying no Mm -hmm. there are plenty of people that like to read on a tablet or on their phone but there are still just as many people that want a book they want 
a book they can hold and pages they can turn. A lot of people like myself read on both formats and also listen to audiobooks. We have a lot of a lot of people that really like audiobooks and downloadable books. Mm-hmm. I would say as far as libraries, for sure, the biggest change hasn't been in fiction readership. It's been in um, research and reference where everything had to be in a book. Of course, now you can Google just about anything. So that's changed libraries' focus dramatically, I would say, where... For instance, Southfield Library had practically a whole floor of reference books. Now it's down to, you know, 10 shelves of reference books because people can do an awful lot of – it's terrific. You can do so much research yourself at home. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to reading, people still want a good story, good fiction. Yes. Um, Well, I myself have noticed, I mean, I've always gone to libraries, and I don't see it dying down. I mean, people are continuing to come in and utilize it, and libraries offer so so many things, you know, outside of books. Nowadays, they have um, movies, and they have Right, and we offer, most of the libraries offer offer downloadable services. So with your library card, you have a whole library of downloadables to choose from, too. Yes, Uh, as well as um, classes, workshops. I mean, I know you guys really, yeah, there's uh, quite a bit that you guys offer. Um, And uh, another thing that I, we were looking at, you know, when we talk about the the Metro Detroit Book and Author Society, um, what is the vision, you know, what's the board's vision? for this society, where do you see it? Where do you want it to go? What do you guys hope for it? Um, I'm fairly new, so I'm more of an observer, you know, that is um, just enjoying the process of learning um, about just the wonderful ways that you guys bring these authors together and being a part of the audience, just seeing, again, how they are so dedicated, (laughs) dedicated readers. Um, uh, So what is the vision? And the mission, actually, the mission and the vision. For well, the mission is really to promote books and reading mm-hmm. and literacy. And I wouldn't say that our goals have really changed. We we want to bring the best authors that we can mm-hmm. to the Metro Detroit area. Mm-hmm. We want to bring books and readers together. We want to promote literacy, mm-hmm. promote reading and uh, have an opportunity for people in this area to see some really great national authors. And, and just hoping that this would continue, obviously, from um, We've done further it, yeah. generations. We've done it since 1972. We would like to keep, keep this alive um, uh, into the future. Do you know the story of how this started? I do. Phil? Oh, I'd love to I hear I wasn't that. there, but, yeah, but I you do heard know this, the story. Okay, the story's still alive. The story's <laughs> so still can, alive. Okay, I'd love to hear the story. In um, September of 1972, a group of librarians and booksellers, um, people that were associated with books and literacy, met at the Detroit News Building on Lafayette in Detroit for the sole purpose of getting together a luncheon featuring national authors. That was the goal right from day one. And several groups were were, uh, represented at this first meeting. And it grew very quickly from the first luncheon, which was held in the Grand Ballroom of the Book Cadillac Hotel in Detroit. It grew to two luncheons, spring and fall, and we've kept that format ever since. And the number of represented groups grew and changed, of course, over the years. But the board has always been made up of library, book, library, and literacy organizations. To be on the board, you do have to represent an organization. And um, surprisingly, this first group that put this thing together were right on target. And I'd say the biggest difference is we were sponsored by the Detroit News originally. The meetings were all held at the Detroit News Building in Detroit. And then in 2001, the Detroit News ended their sponsorship, and the board 
of the Metro Detroit Book and Author Society carried on without the sponsorship, and we just kept it going. And then in 2013, the Detroit News returned. They don't sponsor the group anymore, but they are a participating organization, along with the Henry Ford. And we now have 18 groups represented on our board. Yes, 18 groups. Um, I wrote down some of them because it is sort of an interesting mix. We have um, a Detroit Public Library and the Detroit Public Library Friends Foundation, Detroit Working Writers, of course, uh, Friends of um, Michigan Libraries, the Oakland Literacy Council, Oakland University Library and Madonna University Library, the Suburban Library Cooperative and the Library Network Cooperative, which represents almost all the public libraries in the Metro Detroit area, Mm -hmm. the Henry Ford, this is just to name a few, and our newest um, member is Wayne State University Press. And we have a new one, too, that we just discussed a little bit Yes, I hope uh, so. Yes, uh, the Authors uh, Guild of America, that just started where uh, a chapter was opened in Detroit. And the Authors Guild of America is uh, based in New York. And they uh, selected me as an ambassador, as one of um, two ambassadors here. And so I love that this is expanding and that, you know, when you have these kind of communities that are already established, it is so much easier also that there's somebody to embrace you. And then it's just easier to plant the seeds and for it to continue the growth. Yes. Yeah. So that's great. Um, So I would like to just kind of maybe go over um, the authors really quickly, just, mm-hmm. you know, their names so people know. Again, um, so this is coming up. Just tell them really quickly mm-hmm. the dates. So they October 15th. Mm-hmm. Um, our website is bookanauthor.org. And then they Very can simple. get the, yeah, they can, like, find out the information, the tickets, the time, yes. everything is on All there, the information correct? is on our website. Yes. yes. <clears throat> and um, like we said, these are the authors um, that, oops, I, this is her book, the authors that are going to be on here. And Ford. Mm-hmm. Mark Leibovich. Mm-hmm. Um, and these are their books, which is really their all their books are. Are they? I think they're all like best-selling authors. Most they're of all them. best-selling authors. Mm-hmm. Uh, the books are all they're all new books. Mm-hmm. And if, like I say, uh, you're able to buy the book um, at the luncheon. And have them signed by the authors. And that's always a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, <coughs> and that's the thing. Um, this kind of event, so, I, yes, there's the authors are there and it's about books, but it's really fun. It's really fun. It really is. I mean, there's a lot of humor that takes place. The discussion is very lively. Yes. Um, each, yes. again, because authors have unique personalities in yes. themselves. Their stories, they wouldn't be up there they would not be presenting they would not even be invited <laughs> yes and <laughs> if it's they not didn't a, um, have those really interesting stories yes and they're wonderful speakers it's, yes. it's not a question and answer <coughs> format and it's also not um it's not a reading format it's the authors True. actually getting up there speaking about themselves their personal stories how they came to write their books <laughs> so we do get really interesting and a, a lot of a lot of humor and um it is a luncheon, table seat 10, so <coughs> bring your friends. Bring your fr- yes, and um, so before we finish up here, what I would like to, to ask you is, you know, given, again, you've been surrounded by books and you're such an advocate uh, for readers and literacy, um, especially with this day and age, and, you know, um, I could say maybe what advice you would have for children, but in reality, a lot of the people are sometimes kind of uh, connected to their electronics more than they are to uh, reading something that's like a, a whole book. They might just want to read yes. things in small spur. Um, what maybe like something from your observation, whether it's an advice or what have you observed, why is it even important to read a book? Um, and how can somebody who maybe wants to but is busy with, you know, with <laughs> Twitter... <laughs> Because it can be addictive. Yes, I mean, I can, yes. you know, I'm guilty of it where you're on there and then you feel like you're reading a book because you're 
well, it is. I mean, these are all these quotations and people are talking back, but it's not the same as a book, obviously. Exactly. Nothing, yeah, nothing like that. What would you say to something like this with the with the new technology and the, you know, the new generation and, and how can they stay connected and why is it important for them to stay connected? Well, you're right. Information is in little bits and pieces and we're so used to quick little blurbs. Everything is a quick blurb. It's a headline. But a reader is a reader. And I think a lot of readers start young. Um, you start reading as a reading as a kid. Give your kids books, real books. Mm -hmm. We have at my library, we have children that come in with their summer reading list from school and they, they have to read over the summer. Mm -hmm. And I think once you develop a love of reading, you have a love of reading. It's um, maybe it is a harder thing to get an adult who's never been a reader mm. to sit down and read a book. Mm -hmm. But um, whatever you read, it does. I don't think it really matters if it's nonfiction, if it's a magazine, or it's an online magazine. As long as you're reading, that's the important it, thing. Yeah, it's it's a good ha habit to get into. And for me, I view it as um, exercise. I mean, mm -hmm. I. I've gotten myself used to taking walks outside, and then I notice that when I don't, my body responds to that, right, like it's right. not as comfortable. Mm -hmm. So the same thing would happen with reading. Once you read longer material than like just a tweet, yes, just a tweet <laughs> or right, Facebook messages, right. um, then you understand there's a different kind of appreciation because mm -hmm. the kind of feelings that it, a book develops yes, and the characters, not fiction or nonfiction, even the character mm -hmm. of the author. Even a podcast. Even I a, mean, a podcast yes. is, is really like yeah. a book also. Well, you know what? And I do, um, and I understand that there are people you know, we're all busy and diff depending, but sometimes I get sent on assignments that are mm -hmm. maybe an hour away. And this is a perfect opportunity. I always have my CDs, my audio books. Yes, me too. Stacked. I because always have an audio book. I would actually go crazy driving all that yes. and the traffic and stuff. And it's really soothing. It actually makes you have yes. the patience because you, you are, in, you know, you are reading in a different way. It's, yes, I think a, that's a great way for yes. somebody who's not really a reader, doesn't feel they have the time to sit down with yes. a book just pop an audio book you know plug in your phone or if you have a cd player in your car come to the library the library has audio books tons of audio books yes. downloadables now yeah. and get involved get involved that way there's so many ways there's so many creative ways that we can do this and um and also it is fun once we meet the authors it's kind of mm -hmm. develops a different relationship and appreciation yes. and we might some a lot of people say that they like to read a book because they know the person that you know or they met the person mm -hmm. um that uh, they're reading about so i want to thank you so much for coming today uh i think uh i mean obviously as an author myself and all the uh, everything I'm associated with is like I'm vice president of Detroit Working Writers, ambassador of, ambassador of the Authors Guild. I'm now involved with the uh, Metro Detroit Book and Author Society. So this is really a favorite subject of mine. But I, I do feel like you guys present it in a beautiful way, a fun way. Going and having a luncheon and meeting all these authors is something beautiful. So just go to the website and check it out. And I hope you can join us. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank much. You.